how we partner uh, with Rich Webb. Uh, a lot of you may know us as ABG, so the ABG business by Avast, uh, there might be some questions there. Uh, Avast actually purchased ABG in October of last year. And so while we're still operating as two uh, individual business units, we're housed in the same places now um, and moving forward. There's a, we've been making some branding changes, uh, but it's allowed us to integrate a lot of uh, the same or similar softwares. Uh, AG and Avast are both headquartered out of the Czech Republic. Uh, the corporate offices have been across the street from each other for over 20 years. The, the executives know each other. They go to lunch together. They've been arguing about who should buy who, and finally last year they decided to go this way. And uh, so that's why you see, you'll see the branding ABG Business by Avast. Now, what we do, uh, the core competency for ABG Business by Avast, what our goal is, is to provide secure, simplified, uh, and optimized IT solutions and experiences for all of our users. Uh, our goal is to protect not just networks and devices, uh, but the data, and the people using those uh, devices. Because of the acquisition, uh, Avast now has endpoint security protection on over 400 million endpoints. That makes us the largest, most geo-diverse threat uh, detection network in the world. Uh, we see more and know more about what's happening on IT networks than any other company uh, in the security market. One of the things that Rich Webb can help provide you through being a part of the world's largest security threat detection network is the ability to run site security reports, to know where the security faults lie. Is it a part of uh, the antivirus? Is somebody missing antivirus on their device? Has it been uninstalled? Uh, are you aware of how the antivirus is set up? Uh, patch security. Uh, you know, what patches are on what devices? Is there a single device on your network uh, that is missing a, a patch that might make you vulnerable. Are you aware of that? Uh, you know, literally within one hour, uh, you can run a report and know specifically the device uh, and specifically the patch that needs to be run. Uh, user security, things like passwords. Do you have um, passwords that expire? Anyone know if their passwords are set on 90 day expiration dates? Or do they, yep, yeah, that's great. Because if you have a password that lasts forever, you set up one password, it makes you a little bit more vulnerable. How many folks have passwords written down on sticky notes and hide it under your keyboard? There you go. <laughs> Major security risks there. So, you know, things like that can be addressed uh, through other software solutions that uh, RichWeb can provide, such as a secure sign-on. Uh, that allows you to give your employees a single password that then accesses all of the background uh, databases, software, web applications that they might want to use without giving them direct access to those applications or databases. Um, so you simply turn on or off the SSO account, they are then denied uh, access. Really want to focus in on ransomware and uh, really what AEG's focus is. Uh, our focus is not just uh, preventing uh, viruses, but also stopping zero-day malware attacks. Uh, you can see between 2015 and 2016, uh, these attacks increased over 6,000%. That number is expected to double uh, this year, again. Down here you can see every 10 seconds a consumer is hit with ransomware. That's up from 20 uh, seconds last year. A new company is hit with ransomware every 40 seconds. So I can't even do the math on how many companies have been hit with ransomware just while we were sitting in here today uh, and what the cost of that could be. That is down from, or up from every two minutes last year. So cyber criminals are getting smarter, they're becoming more efficient, and they're getting faster at what they do. 59% of all those infections came through email. That's the number one way that small and medium businesses are attacked. How many emails do you get a day? How often are they labeled invoice, way bill? Uh, something that makes it look very um, authentic. Uh, and you just happen to click on that link, not thinking that, hey, wait a second, this email address says it's from the UK or it's from Australia and we're not doing business there. It's very easy to make that happen. 
So what is ransomware? It's a, it's a special type of malware that doesn't actually steal your data, it simply encrypts that data. It leaves it there and encrypts it so that you can't access it. And then the cyber criminals offer up a ransom for it. They say, pay us this amount of money by you know, the next hour or we're gonna start deleting files. Or hey, we just deleted this file, we're gonna delete a thousand more in a half hour. If you don't pay us then, we're gonna delete a thousand more after that. Anybody here ever heard of Jigsaw? Yeah, hopefully you didn't get hit with it. Uh, Jigsaw right there uh, was the one that came out a little while back. Uh, WannaCry was one that took advantage of uh, patch management issues where uh, patches weren't up to date. Crypto Locker. Um, anyone here been hit with ransomware in the last year? Right. Did, were you able to recover the files? Uh, in one case, yes. In one case, no. Uh, okay. So okay. it can be very hit and miss. How ransomware works. Again, the number one way it gets into a small medium business is via email. Um, either through a link, um, a malicious attack, attachments. Attachments are it's very easy to tell users never open an attachment if you don't know who the user is. Uh, links are a little more, um, a little easier for that to happen. There was one that went out with the WannaCry. Uh, it looked like, anyone here use um, uh, Google, like Google Sheets? Anything like that. So if you use Google Sheets, you can invite other users to have access to that sheet. Um, the criminals are using very good email templates that look just like that invite. Oh, I've been invited to use another sheet. Don't even think about it. Click on the link. All of a sudden, now the criminals have access to your network. They're collecting data. Uh, they're encrypting files. It may not even happen right away. It can sit on your network for days, weeks, months, if not years while they look at the data to see what amount of ransom should we be asking for. Is this a small gaming business? Is this an enterprise? You know, is this a medical facility? Or is this a consumer? Uh, so they're actually studying who they're attacking. We've even seen variants where they will decrypt your files for free if you give up other potential victims. Give us a hundred business email addresses and we'll give you your data back. Uh, it's it, it, so it, it's very, very uh, malicious in the, their intent. So the key is preventing uh, the ransomware attack. And really the only way to do that is through education, uh, online backup, so that if the files do get uh, encrypted, you can recover those without having to pay a ransom. Right now, uh, or in 2016, the average ransom was a little over $1,000 in the S&B market. Uh, for enterprise level, it was even higher. 71% of uh, businesses that were affected by ransomware lost two days. So if you're generating revenue 24-7, take your uh, number of employees, the average salary, divide that by 20, uh, 2,080 hours in a year, and then multiply by 48, and that's what you lost in that two-day period. That's just in wages. That doesn't count lost sales, lost reputation, One in five businesses never got their data back. They may have paid the ransom. They may have paid the ransom twice. That's another thing we see a lot of. Okay, you paid us $1,000, pay us another $1,000. Old school fishing, this is what it used to look like. You click on a link to get to Facebook. The link looks legitimate, except that it's Facebook, not Facebook. You happen to miss that. You put your login credentials in. Now all of a sudden they're in your, you're in your network. You get an email from Wells Fargo. Well, you just happen to do business with Wells Fargo. Do you click on update your billing information? Most of us now know you don't do that. You go to your Wells Fargo bank site and you do any information updates directly through that, not through your email. But it's critical that we educate all of the employees because, again, small medium businesses, you're getting 20, 100 emails a day. Sometimes you're just not paying attention. You're just in the grind of getting through. I was out for three days last week. I've got 200 emails to get through, boom, 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 all of a sudden now you have an issue. It's becoming very compelling. Who's seen PayPal receipts, even though you haven't purchased anything from PayPal? I get Amazon, I'm an Amazon mom, we have four kids, so you know, we get diapers and all that kind of stuff sent to the house, pantry. I'm forever getting Amazon notifications that my order has been canceled. Well, I haven't placed an order today. 
Honey, did you place an order? No, I didn't place an order. Well, don't click on any links. Uh, they're getting very good. That's, it's very compelling as well. It makes sense to your business. Uh, you get it from a business partner. Hey, Bob, uh, can you double check this? I just need somebody to verify this information is correct before I send it out to the company. Drive-by links. This is another very common um, attack method for sites where uh, advertisements are up. Yahoo, uh, back in July, over 2 million users clicked on the link uh, to update their settings uh, to prevent pop-ups. Uh, and all that did was um, get, make them uh, vulnerable to the malware attacks. Turning off the ad blocker, um, looking at imprints. MSN got hit in August of 2015. Uh, again, all through the ads on the side of the web pages. This is why content filtering or web monitoring is critical for uh, protecting your network. Uh, we're not saying you don't allow your employees to go out on the internet at all, but you're going to want to know where they are, where they've been, what types of sites they're going to. Rich Web can provide you reports that show every website that's been visited. You can set up certain websites to be warned or to be blocked explicitly. The most secure way is to set up a whitelist. These 15 sites we need to do business on. These five sites are okay for personal browsing during you know, special hours and lunch time, that sort of thing. But outside of these sites, we don't want uh, employees going anywhere. So they can set that up for you. It's very easy to manage as well. Uh, they can even give you access to a port so that you can add or remove websites um, at will. Email's not the only conduit, though. A lot of people check their Hotmail, Gmail, Yahoo Mail at work. They, that's where a lot of these phishing scams are coming in. It's going out to the consumer, but it's happening in the SMB uh, marketplace because they're at work when they're checking. Uh, they're, down, they're doing downloads. Adobe had a huge uh, problem, not, I guess it was last year, where you were getting pop-up that your Adobe had expired, you need to update that file, wasn't actually Adobe asking you to do that, it was a cyber company. USB drives, this is more of a malicious type of an attack. Anyone ever had an experience where you plugged in a USB? Yeah, where you, you, you don't, hmm? It was very, very, very bad. Yeah. Somebody brings a USB in from work, they want to look at their wedding photos, they forgot that they had also downloaded something else onto that same drive, and with no intent, plugged it in and infected the network. A shortened link, that's where uh, you know, it looks like a valid link. Uh, it actually takes you to uh, a malicious site, as well as uh, IMs, chat, torrent, Dropboxes. If you use a Dropbox, I have a story to share with you. I did a short step for about a year as a recruiter for a company, and I recruited mechanical engineers. I still, to this day, five years later, have access to my Dropbox account. I can go in and see all of my clients, all the deals that I started, if they hired people, who they hired. I can look at everybody's opportunities they have coming in the next year. I called and told the owner that I still have access twice. I still have access. That guys, they only need one way in. They have dozens. They've only got to be successful one time. And again, they're hitting um, the network so hard. Consumers are being infected every 10 seconds, and again, small, medium businesses every 40 seconds. They're successful. Um, ransomware as a service. This is the new school. So now, instead of trying to infect you guys, they're out there selling the ability to anybody who wants to pay for anywhere from 30, 40 bucks to $175, the capability of running their own ransomware. So software as a service, ransomware as a service. Uh, it takes no skill, no technology, and has a very low risk of being caught. So this is happening now. So here's how it works. Everybody has that data on your network that's valuable. And right, you know, we, we have customer information, uh, we have invoices, we have previous uh, uh, records of documentation. You might even have end user information, Target, uh, NASCAR. And to prevent that information from being leaked out or stolen or lost, most companies, a lot of companies, will try to pay the ransom. Once that ransom is paid, even with a short interruption, it affects you, but there's no guarantee you're going to get that money back. And the way that you pay the ransom, is via Bitcoin. Anyone heard of Bitcoin? Okay, so most people have heard of it. 
But you know how to buy it, where to get it? It's the internet, it's currency for the dark web. Yep, dark web currency. And that's, the reason they use it is because it's completely 100% online. There's no way to track it. The government can't get involved and look to see who got it, who sent it, how much was sent. There's no way you don't get a receipt. You know, you can't go to complain to the returns department uh, that you didn't get your data back. And the amount of data that that would take. Uh, it's called it's degooping, if anyone's familiar with uh, that terminology. Uh, again, that's you know, multiple devices with the same base software. You only need one copy of the base. And then as you make additional adjustments or add additional files, uh, it's the incrementally backed up. So it protects any changes you make on a day-to-day -day or hour-to-hour -hour, uh, move. Uh, On-site backup is okay. Off-site is good. Uh, combination thereof with cloud care backup is best. But disaster recovery, that's really, you know, if the hurricane hits or uh, there's a tornado, earthquake, God forbid the building hits the ground and there's rubble, um, disaster recovery would allow you to be up and running in a new facility on new devices within days. Uh, I believe I've already hit this pretty well. Awareness and education, what to look for and what to avoid implementing those policies. Uh, you need to know if the antivirus on the computer is up to date. Does someone try to uninstall the antivirus? Are they uninstalling content filtering? Do they have that capability? Does anyone here know if uh, your employees have the ability to uninstall the antivirus? No. They, they don't? That's, that's excellent. Yes. So if it's locked down, password protected, yes. um, that's, that's perfect. Well, I have online, mine is on. I think I have to log in online to update everybody that can do it virtually, but they have mm -hmm. to, they can't do it. Yeah. Great. You know, and a lot of companies don't have that. So if somebody takes the laptop home and they, they get tired of getting blocked from their favorite website, right. um, you know, they uninstall. Okay. You know, so uh, that can create some uh, potential yeah, issues. Had that <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, what to do when, when this occurs, make sure the employee knows that, hey, everybody makes mistakes. We're all human. You were in a rush, you clicked on a link, hey, let, let us know, we'll contact uh, Rich Webb, we'll get it resolved. <laughs> okay, yeah, all software is up to date, uh, they can help you with that. Windows updates, Windows patch management, uh, all can be automated. When it comes to the multi-level uh, protection, uh, ABG offers internet security. This is also available through our cloud care um, solution uh, offered by RichWeb uh, that will allow you to know exactly uh, what has been detected and then they can go in and decide how to best remove it. I, I have a question. Yes. Is one browser more susceptible to uh, malware attacks than any other? Because I don't use Internet Explorer because of previous experience. Is, is that still true? To my knowledge, uh, they're all susceptible. Uh, Internet Explorer is one that I do not use either because of pre previous experiences. Um, uh, at one time, I know it was uh, more heavily uh, attacked, um, and I was using Mozilla Firefox. Uh, I found that to be safer, but you know they're susceptible as well. So I wouldn't say that anyone nowadays is any more vulnerable uh, than the others. It all matters. What really matters is whether or not it's up to date. Okay. And all the security patches have been put right. in place. Because as soon as the security patch goes out of date, there's somebody out there figuring out how to take advantage of that vulnerability. Alright. Next steps, contact Chris Webb. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you guys again. Are there any questions uh, about ransomware, how to protect yourselves from it? Uh, anything that I brought up today? Anybody find any value in that information? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Well, I appreciate that. Okay. Was I'm understanding. Able, I'll make one point real quick. You guys are probably wondering why on earth would anybody want to uninstall or disable their antivirus? You get asked that a lot. It's uneducated users. It's a real world scenario. It costs the customer a lot of money. Uh, one of their financial people uh, was bringing in USB drives from home with spreadsheets that she would work on from home. She got tired of waiting for it. They weren't using ABG, they were using a better product. And it was taking a couple of minutes for the computer to scan the uh, thumb drive. And she said to the IT person, take the antivirus off. Do not scan my thumb drive. I'm bringing stuff along. It's fine. I'm tired of waiting five minutes or whatever to get started today. He said no. She went to the director, and the director said, and she says, so he 
removed it. Yeah, it got removed it. A couple months later, he had a fifty thousand dollar financial transaction that was executed against that company because what happened is she had been brought in a USB stick that had something on it. Antivirus couldn't run because it was told not to. They got a Trojan horse on the machine. People got in their machine, figured out what they were doing. They made a couple of credit card transactions, figured out what their limit was. They got about a fifty thousand dollar charge there before they got caught. This company lost money, lost funds. That's unrecoverable. They're, they were liable for it. It's all because the IT person didn't have the back or the, the director didn't have the IT person's back on enforcing their policy. So it happens more than you think. People get tired of having to wait because it's too slow, a computer turns too slow, and they turn off an antivirus. So it does happen. It is a real world scenario. One of the main things that we do to, to help our customers uh, make sure that they don't get risk where we try to keep them all the Windows and A is that the Windows and A can go and enforce their policy and prevent Yeah, and the key there is that it was probably months later. It doesn't happen necessarily right away. Uh, you know, they can sit there for months, a year, until they figure out exactly you know what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and, and how much they can uh, hit you for. My, my folks got hit with the uh, ransomware this has been a couple years back uh, on their computer, uh, drained the computer account overnight. Uh, and what they had missed was that for uh, every month for six months, there was a 10 cent withdrawal, 20 cent withdrawal, testing to see if anybody was noticing. Nobody noticed all of a sudden in one day it went to 200, 300, 4,000, gone. And so luckily, you know, with insurance and whatnot, uh, that was recoverable. Uh, but uh, yeah, the cyber criminals are very sneaky. Yeah, they, they, they know how to get, get it out of it. And uh, the best way, the only way to prevent that is to set up the right policies and make sure you have everything in place. Your, your cyber insurance may not cover you if you deliberately done things that would cause you to fail in your audit. Thank you all for your time.